Hello, my friend. You asked me if I could speak about evil. And you're right. That is a very important topic that is often avoided. And why is it avoided? Firstly, it is avoided because when we speak about evil or we call other people evil, we are basically demonizing them. We're demonizing them. And that means we're reducing them to one thing. And we can only see their negative sides. And we stop being able to see the whole of them or understand their motivations or see where they are coming from. So we have to be cautious in using words like evil. But having said that, we can take it away from a kind of religious context. As you know, in a religious context, there's always this opposition between good and evil, and good is linked with God, and evil is linked with the devil, or the demons, or the dark side. So, in a more existential approach, you would see the whole of human existence and the whole of life, really, not being an opposition between these extremes, but an interweaving of different opposing forces that we learn to work with. So it's a much more subtle way of understanding that, and that involves recognizing that we ourselves could do harm, but not necessarily in a way that makes us evil. So we need to make the distinction between harm that is done quite deliberately and harm that is done out of ignorance or negligence or maybe out of a simple lack of knowledge or a lack of consideration or a lack of perspective. And a lot of evil is like that. When Hannah Arendt spoke about evil in the context of the Holocaust, she spoke about the banality of evil, which was to recognize that when people are evil, the people around them who collaborate with them get so used to doing certain things that they don't think anything of it anymore. It's like your standards slip and you begin to think that it's okay to put a person behind bars or it's okay to kill a number of people or, hey, it's necessary to do this because these other people are evil. So you get these accusations of the other side being evil and a lack of recognition that maybe one's own actions have now strayed into an area, a territory, that is very close to what one would consider evil. So evil is anything that deliberately destroys or harms, especially harms other people, and most particularly for me, it becomes evil when people take pleasure in doing that harm. As for instance, with people who torture others and take sadistic pleasure in doing so, or people who become uh, serial killers, or people who like to go from war to war because it affords them the right to kill and hurt and, um, well, really make other people suffer as much as they can, or people who deliberately uh, enjoy harming animals. That also gets very close to my understanding of what evil is. But most of this is based in character flaws that come from people's early experiences. I doubt very much that any child is born evil. 
and I think that many people who have done evil things are not because of that evil in essence they have just lost the plot as it were they've lost the sense of perspective and they've lost their capacity to be aware of how their actions are actually impacting on other people and how they are received by other people so this the importance of remaining sensitive to other people's experiences and remaining aware of the impact of our own actions on others and the capacity to take responsibility for the consequences of one's actions and to bear out and support the consequences of one's actions is very important. But of course, if you do, if you take an action that leads to death, then there is no way you can bear the responsibility for that. The only way society will deal with that is by punishing you and take away your freedom so that you won't be able to do that again. But in day-to-day -day life, evil is often experienced as other people not taking care enough of you and therefore neglecting to do right by you that can seem like evil so a lack of care can turn into a feeling of evil quite easily but again i think we need to be very very careful about branding people with that word and reserve it for these extreme situations that I have been referring to. It's important to check in yourself when you have kind of evil impulses, which we all do, and to know where that comes from and to know how you can even that out by asking yourself how you can actually get even in a way that isn't going to harm or inflict pain on other people but it is nevertheless going to set the record straight if wrong has been done to you and that is the topic of another discussion my friend i hope this helps a little bit steer clear of evil as much as you can and be aware of how you can point your intention in ways that are not just good for yourself, but that are also harmless, at least, for other people and other creatures. And you'll feel a lot better about the world if you do that. Take care, my friend.